The North Carolina House and the North Carolina Senate passed the legalization of sports gambling here in the state of North Carolina. It currently sits on the desk of Governor Roy Cooper, who has about another seven days or so, I believe, Brian Murphy, eight days to sign it into law. Am I correct on that? Yeah, yeah around that he has up line? to 10 days to sign it. I think it got passed over to him yesterday, so okay. we'll, we'll see when he decides to sign that. All indications that he's given, and he's talked about it numerous times, he will sign it. So we're just waiting for the for when he does it, not if he's going to do it. Joining us now on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline, State Senator Jim Perry the, out of the Republican, uh, Republican out of the District 2, which is you know, Beaufort, Craven, Lenore County. He's the Senate Majority Whip. Joining us here on the Heaster Automotive Group Hotline. Last year, Senator Perry, we saw sports gambling not get passed. What was the difference between this year compared to last year? Well, I, I think you, you've got a few differences. Uh, one, you've got uh, some new members, you know, and, and people come in and they bring their life experiences with them and, and their thoughts about the world. So, you know, that was certainly part of it. I also think that the the teams that would have been impacted uh, by not having sports betting did a, a very good job of, of being active and engaged with their uh their government relations teams and talking with the members, you know, the, the thought of a salary cap is a very real issue. And when we have sports teams here who compete against teams from other parts of the country who have that, that revenue source, uh, it gives them, it, it pushes up the salary cap, mm -hmm. right? So our sports teams have to compete against that same uh, salary cap. But if we don't give them a revenue source to help with that, all we do is shrink their margins and put them at a competitive disadvantage, which, you know, long term, it, it makes it hard to justify being in North Carolina or in some of these smaller markets. So I think you saw a few different things collide on that, which were all good changes. Senator Perry, Brian Murphy here. I talk to you. You can't get away from me. We talk often about these gambling bills. <laughs> hey, Brian. How, How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Well, I wanted to talk about the sports books because, you know, you mentioned the local teams and they're the ones who are going to benefit from these in person sports books. Well, what do you envision for these sports books? And there's been a lot of talk. Philip Isley of the Centennial Authority says there could be two locations at, at PNC Arena. What do you envision, you know, in a year, in two years, and three years down the line, what these look like? Well, you know, I think it, it takes a little time to uh, to develop that concept and decide what it's going to look like for the teams. They do have the ability to have something uh, on property or within uh, close proximity. I have to look back over the legislation. I think it was we settled on somewhere around a half a mile um, from the location with a few exceptions. But, you know, when we first wrote the legislation and we were really thinking about uh, mobile um, sports betting because that's what we had been approached about and we we put this idea of a place of public accommodation in there you know as we thought through it it just it didn't make any sense because all it was was a restaurant mm -hmm. that had internet and you know how do you really uh, take advantage of that and monetize it if you were a team uh and I'll, I'll use the hurricanes as an example this is a very small market uh, the what they can sell tickets for uh, is much lower than what they can sell tickets for in other areas. And, you know, there's a location out there that sits largely unused. So having the ability to uh, monetize the existing physical plant um, is, is certainly uh, advantageous. You wouldn't have to spend a lot of money to do that. And you, you, you plug fans into the experience. There are people that, uh, you know, bet on sports at, at different times, and I think getting them out in, in that area or out to the arena and keeping them plugged into their teams is very, very valuable. You know, it's another another revenue source. Well, we've talked a lot about sports gambling, and, and I, I'll, I'll ask you, do you know when the governor's going to sign this? You've been invited to any kind of signing ceremony? Um, well, not, not to – get in front of uh, my colleagues or the governor, but I, I do anticipate a, a signing ceremony uh, the middle of next week. Okay. Nice. Great. Of course, the, the North Carolina GOP convention happening this week in Greenville, so maybe the governor's going to wait till that's over and you guys are all back in Raleigh. I, I wanted to, We've talked a lot about sports gambling. Casinos are another thing that's gotten some traction down at the at the legislature, and I, I wondered if you had any update on that. There's, there's certainly been talk of 
you know, okaying maybe three or four of these entertainment districts, possibly in in parts of the state that are, are struggling economically or haven't had the growth and development that that maybe we in Wake Wake County have have enjoyed. Uh, your thoughts on, on casinos, and is that something we might see this session, or will that have to wait until the future? So I'll say that casinos are are not a new conversation. You know, and, and looking back in history and reading in the '90s, the uproar it caused when the the Cherokee. Um, we're going to have a casino in the western part of the state. The, the world was coming to an end. And, you know, I have been up there, and I've seen what they've used that money for in their community to build schools and hospitals. And, you know, each tribe member gets a, a stipend. I mean, it, it's it's just amazing the economic impact that it's had. And No, we haven't had an influx of uh, uh, organized crime moving into the area, as many had predicted. So, you know, over the years, we've talked about, a casino uh, down east. I've I've read about it for at least fifteen years, and uh, I've had conversations in the last ten just with uh, with folks as the Catawba effort was going on up on uh, you know up in a, in a different part of the state. So uh, I am certainly open to having that discussion. Anyone who can bring me fifteen hundred to twenty five hundred jobs in eastern north carolina Mm -hmm. uh don't assume i'm closed-minded come talk to me because we (laughs) need something you know we we need something in that part of the state and uh i'm not foolish enough to think that we can continue with population losses and and no jobs for our people so i would welcome the discussion the economic impact is not just about gambling revenue it is the ad valorem tax base that it would bring to a county it is the jobs uh, it is the you know the M1 M2 the money supply circulating the economy. Uh, we we've got to be realistic about where our opportunities are and capitalize on them. And uh, I hope those discussions continue as to whether or not um, that is something that could be accomplished. This session, I'm not going to speculate. I will just say um, I would actually be hopeful mm-hmm. if um, if we had that that opportunity for that type of, of economic impact on the state of North Carolina. Uh, I understand the math and I'm, I'm willing to listen to it and I'm hopeful. North Carolina state Senator Jim Perry joining us here on the Heaster automotive group hotline alongside Brian Murphy, Dennis Cox here with you. My final question when it comes to the sports gambling bill, we saw last year that multitude of schools, state universities were going to be receiving funds from money generated from sports gambling we saw the addition of app state unc charlotte and east carolina to the bill that was passed by you all in the senate as well as the house and currently sits on roy cooper's desk to get passed Uh, why the addition of app state unc charlotte and east carolina to the bill well, you know, sometimes things are a lot more simple than, than people believe them mm-hmm. to be. And uh, we had some members, and I was among them, that wanted East Carolina added. They certainly had their um, their difficulties in their athletic programs. And, you know, they're in the East. That's, 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 that's your area. <laughs> the state that I, I represent. Mm-hmm. And, and to in order to do that, um, you know, Representative Singh is a, a UNC Charlotte guy. That's his school. He worked hard on it. He wanted to see his school added. That only left uh, App State outside of, of state in Carolina. And I, I'm, I graduated from both of those schools. So I tend to be partial to them. But let, let's be honest, their athletic programs do a little better than the others. So, you know, it was just a negotiation at the end. And uh, we did what we thought was, was right. Fair point. Let, let, let me switch gears on you just a little bit. Um, you mentioned NC State and North Carolina. We talked a little bit about conference realignment earlier today. Um, someday there may co- come a time where the ACC mm. doesn't exist anymore or, or schools are looking to get out of the ACC. Certainly I know both of those schools have powerful alums. Do you think there's a, a, any chance that those schools would be allowed to to leave the ACC and go their own separate ways, even if it meant you know one of them gets to the SEC and, and the other one doesn't? Oh, man, you're giving me a trap question. <laughs> uh, but I, I will answer it. No. No. I do not. So if, no. if Carolina got invited to the SEC and NC State was going to be relegated to a, a diminished ACC, you don't think they'd be allowed to go? I, I do not. All right. It's just one idiot's opinion. No, no, it's one powerful idiot's opinion. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's the answer right there. That's North Carolina Senator Jim Perry – 
Senator Perry, thanks so much for your time. We really do appreciate it. Enjoy the weekend. I know, again, you're from down east. Hopefully you go enjoy the Big Rock while you get a chance. I am at the beach right now. There so it I is. I look forward to it. Thank you for having me. Thanks, That's, Senator. That's Senator Jim Perry, the majority, the Senate Majority Whip, again, District 2, covering Beaufort, Craven, Lenore County. Uh, is again, the Republican uh, Senate Majority Whip joining us here on the Keith Strato Group Hotline.